Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed Australia-wide weather forecast update for Saturday the 24th of May 2025. There is a lot of detail to get through again today. A powerful low pressure system expected to move through Tasmania later on tonight and then a monster low pressure system moving into the Great Australian Bight expected to bring near record breaking swells for South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania's west coast. Very significant weather conditions on the way into early next week. All of the details on that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into the details today. Currently, we've got that low-pressure system that has been bringing all of that rainfall to New South Wales over the last couple of days since Monday, basically. Uh, a nice sunny change for the New South Wales east coast this morning. Plenty of sunshine around, not a lot of cloud here and there. There's hardly any rainfall to speak of as well around New South Wales, Victoria. It is now all shifted south as this low-pressure system unravels itself and heads further south through the Ferno Islands overnight and now into the east coast of Tasmania. There have been some significant rain Rainfall observations across the east coast of Tasmania as well. Falls between 25 to 40 millimetres have been reported overnight. And we've also had some heavier falls as well along the Tasmanian west coast. But of course that pales in comparison to the near 700 millimetre deluge that places around Tari and Coffs Harbour have picked up. 687 millimetres was the highest week-long rainfall accumulations at Marapaba outside of, I believe, Kempsey. Uh, that was the most significant rainfall observations, but about 12 weather stations operated by the Bureau of Meteorology picked up over 500 millimetres of rainfall across the New South Wales mid-north coast and more significant rainfall observations at personal weather stations as well, resulting in some of the worst flooding that this region has received in the last couple of years and for Tari, it was their worst flooding on record. Again, more significant rainfall piling into New South Wales when the wet season is meant to be over. It's not unheard of for this time of the year, but thankfully the rainfall is now pretty much completely all said and done. There are some strong winds though accompanied by this. You can see Wilson's promontory down here at 46 kilometres an hour, 74 kilometres an hour at Hogan Island out of the west, so winds are quite gusty through the Bass Strait and into the northern parts of Tasmania, but for the most part, this weather is non-severe and not unusual for this time of the year. Looking a little bit forward, and we're going to have to look very far south here, right down into the Great Australian Bight. In fact, probably about as far away as we've looked from Australia on this channel, we have this meaty low-pressure system down here, well to the south of Australia. This is a very strong system indeed, a pressure of 968 millibars at this point in time, and this is going to be a problem system being pushed forward by the greatest uh, by a great Australian bite high pressure ridge now beginning to build across uh, the southwest regions of the uh, southern ocean we're expecting this low pressure system to rage up into the great Australian bite and it's going to bring some severe weather if ever I've seen some so we're expecting showers to continue across the South Australia coastline throughout the remainder of today a weak cold front actually expected to uh, blow through later on today which could bring a couple of millimeters here and there up to 10 millimeters at the southeastern corner of South Australia but it is going to be quite windy but winds being dragged down from the northwest will keep temperatures a little bit more milder than what they're going to be over the next couple of days. And then this powerful cold front is going to sweep up. This is going to be a true southerly sweeper, that's for sure. Uh, through Sunday afternoon and into Sunday evening. Uh, pardon my voice, crossing the coast of South Australia through Sunday night and into early Monday morning, expecting some strong winds accompanied with the main cold front band, which is going to come through Sunday night for much of South Australia and then into early Monday morning for the western half of Victoria. And then it's going to be the backside of the system here, the southerly air pool that sweeps up behind it. That's going to be the real kicker. This is going to be powerful. Uh, one of the most severe weather events we're expecting this calendar year. Sweeping up from the south through Monday and into Tuesday, heavy showers, small hailstorms, damaging locally destructive winds and the massive low pressure pool that's going to sweep up behind it are expected to connect with the South Australian coastline through Monday morning and into early Monday afternoon for the Victorian side of things. This will then go into Tasmania as a bit of a weaker system and we'll be seeing snow down to about 600 metres through Monday night and into early Tuesday morning across the northern parts of Tasmania and snow down to 800 metres rather for the high country of Victoria and about 900 metres for the high country of New South Wales around Threadbow and Mount Kosciuszko. Significant rainfall isn't expected from this weather event here, and for the most part, it clears out by Tuesday afternoon and evening with that high pressure ridge building and dragging up even more cool air through Tuesday and into Wednesday. So it's going to be bitterly cold on Tuesday and especially into Wednesday morning throughout South Australia, Victoria, and into Tasmania. But it's going to be the main low pressure ball, the intense low pressure system that sweeps up, and this polar air mass is going to be a kicker. So, like I said, rainfall accumulations are not expected to be anything crazy. This is four day rainfall accumulations here, widespread falls between 10 to 25 millimeters across the 
the Air Peninsula. Falls up to 30 millimetres through Adelaide and could be a little bit higher out towards Mount Lofty sort of area into the uh, eastern suburbs. We'll be seeing higher rainfall accumulations as well across the southeast of the state with falls between 25 to 50 millimetres possible along the coastline. Falls are going to be light through much of western Victoria and also for the most part through the west coast of Tasmania as well. Unfortunately what they desperately need across South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania is rainfall and it's kind of the only severe weather aspect here that's not properly materialising. Wind accumulation during the same period which highlights the strongest wind gust expected during the selected period so over the next four days really looking quite significant. Peak wind gusts as strong as 110 kilometres an hour around Port Lincoln. Damaging winds between 90 to 110 kilometres an hour expected across much of the Air Peninsula extending up through Wyala and up towards Port Augusta as well and then into the mountainous areas or the hilly areas outside of Adelaide wind gusts again up to 110 to 115 kilometers an hour through Adelaide itself through Monday and Tuesday wind gusts could reach 100 kilometers an hour damaging winds expected across much of the southeastern corner of South Australia and damaging locally destructive winds also expected up through Sejuna and across the Great Australian Bight coastline as a whole but again the most significant aspect of this weather system is still to come on the forecast it's going to be the wave heights you can see this massive polar air blast moving through on Sunday and into Monday here with the forecast models and it's th through Monday morning that these massive waves arrive into the south coast of South Australia through Port Lincoln, Kangaroo Island and then making up into the, I think it's the, uh, oh, what's this called here? It's something golf and it escapes me. I looked at it before I made this video but the name escapes me so help me out in the code section down below and I thank you in advance but waves up to 10 metres expected around Kangaroo Island and it through the Air Peninsula as a whole. Some very significant wave heights can be expected. Along the coastline we'll be seeing waves between 3 to 6 metres through Monday and into Tuesday. Further offshore, waves as high as 10 metres, so go, it goes without saying that boating, fishing, any marine-based activity through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday is absolutely not recommended whatsoever and would be extremely dangerous to partake in. And it's only through Wednesday that we start to see these significant wave heights begin to drop. But this is truly going to be some near record-breaking stuff for South Australia. If we see 10 metre waves developing off the Air Peninsula and Kangaroo Island, this is the type of waves that really only develop in tropical cyclones and the most intense of low pressure systems here so I do believe that this stuff here is going to be record breaking or quite close to record breaking for parts of the South Australian coastline and this strong low pressure system I mean it goes without saying the temperatures also expected expected to absolutely plummet through South Australia and Victoria we could be seeing temperatures as low as uh, very low single digits or even below zero through Monday morning and into Tuesday morning but also especially through Wednesday morning by the looks of things it is going to be quite a cold start for parts of Victoria and also into New South Wales and Tasmania by extension as well. That's a lot of talk for a weather event affecting South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania so let's shift this focus here to uh, Western Australia. We've got some more significant rainfall coming through for Western Australia and the bigger picture forecast for Western Australia with rainfall accumulations over the next 14 days looking really meaty that's for sure for much of the state. We've of course got that mid-level moisture band streaming in from the Indian Ocean that's going to begin to kick itself up from tomorrow night and expecting heavy rainfall through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday through parts of the Pilbara and the Kimberley region south of Broome but north of Marble Bar and Telfer. There's really a whole lot of nothing out here so there's not expected to be too many people that are going to be in the way of this significant rainfall but nonetheless 100 to 200 millimetres could be possible along the coastline uh, north of Port Hedland through Wallala and Bajangara and up towards Broome which in itself is expecting about 100 millimetres of rainfall through Monday and Tuesday. Day. Falls between 80 to 160 millimetres or so expected south of Fitzroy crossing as far inland as Balgo Hill and Kuakara and rainfall accumulations as heavy as 75 millimetres also possible inland into the Northern Territory through Docker River and some of the more centralised Indigenous communities through the Northern Territory state. Alice Springs could see as much as 50 millimetres of rainfall and it also looks like long range as this low pressure system makes its way through the interior parts of the nation through the first couple of days of June we might see some rainfall develop into the south central parts of Queensland as well around Charleville and Roma but it's unsure at this point in time exactly how much rainfall we can expect to see at this point in time. We do also expect a little bit of and I'm sidetracking here quite significantly we expect a bit of coral sea moisture to sweep into Queensland uh, through the first couple of days of June at least that's what the long range forecast has been suggesting for the last couple of days now and that could meet up and we could be seeing a bit of a rainfall event develop in south central Queensland but at this point in time we're still very unsure of the magnitude of how much rainfall could be expected and most likely it's going to be quite little.
There is great congruency between the forecast modelling as well. Normally when you see a weather event like this, which is suggesting hundreds of millimetres of rainfall at this time of the year, late May, for northwest and western Australia, it's just from one forecast model. But if you're in the know around the weather world right now, there's plenty of forecast modelling out there to suggest some very significant rainfall accumulations with all four major forecast models available to us here at windy.com uh, showcasing some pretty meaty rainfall accumulations into the northern parts of WA. Again, it's not really affecting a whole lot of people. There's probably about 10 or 15,000 people in total that it could be affected by rainfall over the next couple of days uh, in the northwest of Western Australia in a significant magnitude. So again, there is a whole lot of nothing out here and this rainfall isn't really concerning enough as to where it's going to be a flooding problem. Certainly going to be some big puddles though. So if you are planning on doing four by fouring out here, I would definitely be checking with local shire officers, especially through the first couple of weeks of June. There could be some pretty significant washouts, especially if 150 millimetres does develop and fall in a 24 hour period. There will be some significant flooding up here, but it's not expected to be a significant problem as to where we're seeing towns and uh, small homesteads for such being washed away by the flooding concerns. Anyways, southwest Western Australia also expecting some rainfall, but not really all that much expected out into the last couple of days of uh, May. We're expecting a few more drops of rainfall here and there. There is a little bit lingering as well over the last uh, couple of hours uh, offshore from the Perth coastline, but this, especially down into the south coastal regions, we had a cold front move through on Thursday night. That delivered, like I said in yesterday's video, 14 millimetres of rainfall for my gauge, and I think we've had another millimetre or so overnight, but I'm relatively close to the coastline, so rainfall accumulations have been a lot lighter across the board for people uh, into the more metro areas of Perth and especially through the northern suburbs. Rainfall will return into the first week of June though. We're expecting another strong cold front to develop from about Friday the 30th of May through Saturday and then into Sunday. And then a strong cold front expected to come through on the 2nd of June. We're expecting some significant rainfall to follow in the wake of that system as well through the 3rd and the 4th of June. And then another strong cold front looks to be building much later on into the forecast period as well. Although the forecast modeling has kind of reduced the expected intensity of that cold front. But the first week of June could be a wet one and we could could be seeing rainfall accumulations here or week-long rainfall accumulations up to 80 millimetres across the southwest of Western Australia. A much more reasonable forecast compared to what we were looking at yesterday, which was as high as 220 millimetres or so. We knew that that was boogies, but it is glad that it is a good thing that the forecast models have now came into the understanding that that is boogies. And some good rainfall as well falling for much of the wheat belt. Falls are expected to be between 25 uh, or 20 to 30 millimetres for the first couple of days of June. Uh, for pretty much everywhere apart from around Stirling Range National Park down towards Bremer Bay and Ravens thought rainfall accumulations will be a little bit lighter out there. So get your seed ready for those in the agricultural communities. It looks like the first or out towards the later parts of the first week of June are going to be the prime time to begin planting if you haven't already. And it looks like rainfall is going to be pretty persistent from then onwards. It will be a little bit of a driest uh, week uh, after about the 3rd or the 4th of June. So you get a couple of days of sunshine. Uh, but then after that, expecting some follow-up rainfall as we get out towards mid-June. Whilst there's none on the long-range forecast, I think it goes without saying at this time of the year that we're expecting rainfall out towards mid-June and if we fail to see that rainfall we've got bigger fish to fry across the southwest of Western Australia that's for sure than the rainfall arriving late uh, or later than usual. Anyways, that basically does it for today's weather forecast. There are a few other interesting nuggets here and there up in far north Queensland in terms of rainfall, but we'll refer to those at a later time because rainfall accumulation is not uh, basically expected over the next couple of days. Uh, there's not an awful lot else uh, to be discussing on the forecast models. Uh, stay safe if you're in South Australia, Victoria. I imagine that this weather system is not going to get too much airtime because it is impacting South Australia and Victoria, but I imagine that it is going to be a very, very strong and very significant low pressure system as well. So spread the word as well. Severe weather expected to be very widespread through this part of Australia, through the Great Australian Bight. It's usual for this time of the year though, so don't be panicking, don't be uh, too scared of this type of weather because it is very normal for this time of the year. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and again, I could not run the show without them, so their support is much appreciated, but that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.